Hi, this Vauxhall Zafira B has developed a fault with the throttle position sensor. It's had a fault code come up, which is a 112052 and also a 155001. We've had a look online. They both refer to a throttle position sensor fault. We're gonna try and locate that now, so keep watching. Right, okay then, well first of all, I'd like to say that this looks like a common problem between the uh, Vauxhall Sophia, it could be an Opel as well, and also the Astra and also the VXR, who all share the same sort of electrical layout. Now what basically you've got here is a fault code that's come up uh, with regards to the throttle position sensor, and we've got a secondary code come up which uh, is indicating that there could be a, a throttle body sensor as well. I do believe that the throttle position sensor is our initial fault, and that's what we're going to investigate first. Now I've had a little look online and I've noticed that there's lots of conflicting information down there. There's also lots of people who have done the first port of call and that is just to change the throttle position sensor which sits actually on the accelerator pedal and it is, I think it's a six terminal electrical device which connects your throttle position sensor, which is your pedal, via the underhood electrical center which is your EUEC and then it goes into your ECU. So those are the three components that make up your whole throttle position sensor getting to your computer. What we've got to try and do, and where most people are getting confused here, is they change the throttle position sensor as the first port of call. So if you go to a garage, for example, they'll probably end up changing old parts for new in the hope of sorting the problem out. It's not uncommon for people to take a car with this problem to a main dealer and for them to spend thousands of pounds. There's one instance which I've read online where they took someone, someone took this car with the same problem. They changed the throttle position sensor, which is the pedal mechanism. They also changed the ECU and a few other little bits and they charged, the main dealer charged this person 2,000 pounds and it still didn't solve the problem. Now I've done a bit more of investigation. Rather than just parts changing, we're gonna actually look at what's been happening and how we led up to this event on this car. As I said, this Safira uh, went through a large puddle yesterday and we noticed afterwards that we started to get the, the problem with the fault code. Now the car went through a puddle on this side and this side is where you've got the main fuse box and the UEC, which is the under hood electrical center. It is called the same thing. So there's a very good chance that there is water ingress in this item, which is causing the fault code. So the first thing, without buying any parts, first of all, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the top of the fuse box off, which will reveal the under, elect under hood electrical center, and we're gonna check for water ingress, which can cause this problem, as well as many others. We're using this as the first port of call, because this car has traveled, as I said to you, through a puddle. So let's show you the location of the fuse box and the UEC and let's show you how to strip it down. Right, so first things first here, down on the right hand side of the engine bay, as you can see there, next to the, the, the uh, water bottle there and the battery, lives the uh, fuse box, which is uh, classically called the UEC. And this one, for example, as we can see, has got a problem. It's not very well fixed. So all we've got here is one clip holding it on, so again, it's looking good that there could be water ingress down here. So we've just taken the top of this off now. And as you can see now, we've got our fuse box on display. Right, so we've got three Torx bits here and they are T30. So we're gonna need to undo them so that we can uh, get access to the underside. So we're gonna do that first. But before we do that, first of all, we're actually gonna disconnect the battery as well. And as you probably know, when you're disconnecting the battery, you've got the positive and the negative, always disconnect the negative first in case you splash that accidentally on your bodywork. And because negative is the bodywork, there's no problem there. If you shorted out the positive with some metal work, you create the arc and cause a problem. Right, okay then, so we're just gonna proceed now and undo these three Torx bits, which as I said, are Torx T30s. Right, so once we've got, we've, we've undone the three torques bits, we're now gonna take this little back cover off there and hopefully that should reveal some fixing screws, which as you can probably see there, we're looking at uh, one 10 mil screw there. So we're gonna need to undo that. Right, and then what it looks like we've got here are four T10 
Torx bits, which is one there, one there, one up there, and one there. So we're going to undo them. Just make sure you do undo them screws properly, as you can see, we were just holding on that screw by the looks of it. There we go. Right, so we're lifting that out there. And if we come under here and have a look, you can see here we've got water ingress where it's, we've got corrosion around these pins here. And under here as well, we've got wet. So water's obviously been getting in there. And as you can see, look, all through there, we've got water. So this is looking pretty good for us to locate a problem. So looking down there, you probably can't see, and we've got the corrosion on there as well. And also, if, if I look down in the crease down in here, I can actually see damp and water underneath there. there. Eh? Same on them, red bubbles at the bottom. So we've got water in here as well. So what I would suggest you do is that you blow all this out first of all. Now, if you haven't got an airline, you can actually buy air, pressurised air in a can. So I would just suggest that you blow all of this out here with pressurised air and also get a contact cleaner. Don't use WD-40. That can leave a residue which will hold on to dirt and muck if this does get impregnated again. So get yourself a, a, an electrical contact cleaner and once it's all dried out, give it a good clean and squirt with uh, the fluid and also clean up all the underside, as you can see, of your electrical connectors as well. We've definitely got an issue here. I'm hoping that we found our problem. So as you can see, that didn't take too long to strip down once you know what you're looking for. So before you actually spend any money or take it to a garage, it may be worth you going down this route and checking this and cleaning the underhood electrical center, in other words, the fuse box, the way we've shown you here, and see if that solves your problem before you start throwing any money at it. We're gonna do this now and we'll see you when we're about to put it back together. Right, so we're just going to take some contact cleaner now. Just squirt it in there, as you can see. And we're just going to get in between the tracks there with the, um, all around this area where we had all that stuff. Just to get all that crud off because that could be tracking across there and causing us issues. So we're just cleaning all this. Work, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Getting caught up on these pins. <laughs> right, and then come over and just literally liberally spray, spray your contact cleaner. This thing evaporates, so don't worry about the wetness there, that's all uh, non-conductive stuff. There we go. And um, basically just put it back in. Make sure it's sitting down fully, which it is. And basically just replace all your screws. And always, as I say, make sure or ensure that your lid to your fuse box is on. This one's obviously got an issue with uh, the fuse box there, so it's something you're going to have to be aware of. Click back in your your electrical connector at the front there. So this one, as you can see, it's got a broken lug on there. It may pay to put a new lid on there so that we can actually get the proper seal all around the inner side of the lid there. But we'll have to put this one back on for now. But this could be our issue as well as something else to uh, worry about. A lot of people, when they get their engines jet washed, for example, you can get all water in, in the electrics here. And, it may not show up straight away, but uh, your fault obviously 
water can filter through and cause issues later on so very important to make sure that this is kept dry at all times so again reconnect your battery back up now we're going to do the positive one first right so everything's back together now all that we've used is a t10 torx bit a t30 torx bit and a screwdriver to help lever out the uh, fuse box and also a 10 mil socket and that's all we've used here so we're now going to try and start the car up and see if we've, we're okay and we've sorted the problem out. All right, blip the throttle. Right, so even though it was an intermittent problem, it seems to be okay at the moment. Everything seems to be working as it should be. Right, so Gary's just going to take it around the block and make sure that it's, it's all functioning fine. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to solve your problem, but it could turn out to be very expensive if you take it straight into a dealer's without at least checking this out first of all. It only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do with a few basic hand tools, so it's definitely worthwhile giving it a go before you take it to a dealer and they just start throwing parts at it. As I said, if you look online, there are some horror stories where people have spent £2,000 at a main dealer's with them just changing parts. First thing they change is the pedal box normally, and then they change possibly the ECU, and they didn't solve the problem. They then tried this issue, what we've just shown you here, and this solved the problem. So, Hope you enjoyed this video, hope it can solve your problem as well, or at least throw any light onto your electrical problems. If you've got other intermittent faults as well, always check there for water ingress in your fuse box and your under hood electrical centre, which is your UEC. Thanks very much, hope you enjoyed this video, see you in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe to our videos if you do enjoy them, and we'll see you in the next video, and until then, bye for now. Well, that feels more responsive now. Problem solved. Happy days.